Mm. Happy finally figure out, uh, out doing multi-slot inventory. Ooh. Oh. So connect to a registry. Um, so in order to get to deploy our Docker image, we need to we need to build our image and put it on a registry somewhere. So I am going to Azure has their own registry. It's private. So let's use the Azure. Uh, let's see. So we don't have anything yet. So we connect it to Azure under our under our payment plan. Our payment, we don't have anything there. Let's create a registry. Registry name is going to be the um, learning with Gooseman registry. Learning can only contain. So let's okay. So let's say oh. We we'll do a basic registry under the resource group. Again, we want to, if for applications, you want to group them in one resource group so we can easily find them in the case when we want to delete everything after the end of the stream. It's really easy. We just go to that one resource group and we can delete everything in that resource group. So we'll just call it learning. Uh, and then, so we have different regions that we want our, our container registry to live in. I'm going to, since I'm on the West Coast, I'm just going to say West US. So we successfully created the Learning Gooseman registry. Okay. Next, we want to get this image of our application that is running right here up uh, up to the registry we want to upload it to the registry the first step you have to do if i can remember this correctly is we need to take our we need to take our build our images and this is using the and then this this view right here is the docker ex, uh, plugin extension for vs code that i'm using so we need to tag this and we need to tag it with um for our new registry. So learning Gooseman is our, is the name of our registry. So learning Gooseman is the name of our, our registry. And it's for Azure, this is usually the structure for this. Let's actually go on to the web to take a look at that. So let me quickly flip the resource for that we just created. So under so here is my resource. So, so um, under all resources in the left tab, I clicked on learning with the Gooseman resource and I can see all my resources. There's only one resource right now. We created the registry, the container registry. So if we dive into the container registry, we can see information about it. We can also see that here is the URL to our container registry, learning Gooseman, like the lowercase g. So we want to tag we want to tag this with the slash of our registry and then whatever the name of the image is. We're just going to call it the default Azure Dockerized Rails with the latest. So let's see. So let's tag that. So now we've tagged this image to be slated for this, um, for this registry. Let's see if this is going to work. I don't think so. After we've tagged this, we can push this up to the registry. I'm not sure if this is going to work because I, I think I need to set up the, the credentials on the CLI and the command line interface for this to work. So let's, but let's try pushing and see what happens. I might have to set up the credentials manually. I don't think when you're creating the registry and, and such, Yeah, authentication required. Yeah, so I created the registry, but the Docker command does not know about the registry. 
doesn't know about this registry that I'm trying to push to. Just like with doing GitHub pushes, you need to log into GitHub. You can clone things using Git, but when you're trying to do pushes to that repository, you need to actually log in with credentials. Same thing with Docker. You can get your credentials uh, in the dashboard here by clicking, but when you look up your, um, your container registry and under access keys. So I'm going to do that. So I was able to log into the container registry without doing anything like crazy fancy by using the Azure command line utility saying that uh, ACR login. So this is new. I Before I did like a roundabout way to do the login, but this is um, this is way better. You can do the Azure ACR login name and then login successful. So now in Visual Studio Code, at least I hope that if I do this push, it'll just work now. Because now it's logged in for me. That Azure command line utility did it for me. Yeah, it looks like it worked. It didn't give me that authentication field. Okay. So that's something I should remember to remember about. All right. So we pushed up uh, the image to the registry. It's successful. Uh, let's take a look on Azure itself. Let's hop into the container registry. And you can see right here, we've already, we've used uh, 0.5 gigabytes. So we actually have um, something in the registry. Very cool. So here's our, here's our container, or here's our image. We can see here on, on the, uh, on the old uh, Docker image. Let's try this again. So deploy Azure Web App uniquely, global uniquely, so basic learning. Gooseman, same resource group. So resource group, same one. Create a new app service. Enter the name of the app service plan. Yes, we're doing basic then. And then now we select it's weird that it kind of glitched out. All right, and then we'll click, we'll select West US. What about yours? Mine was okay. Mine well, was pretty good. At least I have nothing to complain about, which is, if I have nothing to complain about, then it's a good week. Let's see. Let's close all these windows by right, Dennis. All right, so created a new web app, this one. Let's open it up. It's probably not going to work because, or at least not going to work appropriately because it's not going to be running in the correct production mode. So let's go into here and let's create, let's set the configuration again. And we're going to tell it that it should be um, create a new environment variable again for Rails and V production. Go ahead and deploy, set that as deployment slot. Click save. Tonkers. Honky tonkers. Look, he's saying good work to me. Not poor Dennis. Dark Knight. It's probably booting up. It does take a while since this is a brand new application, so it's gonna take a while to load up. We're almost at the two hour mark. I was hoping to get this done within the two hour window. Honka S. <laughs> you do have the talk to him S. 
Although it'd be fun to be able to change it to Honka. Okay, now we're actually getting information coming from the pulling in. So now we can actually see the deployment running. So container settings, it's pulling in from the registry. You can see right here, it's pulling in from here and it's downloading the registry, the, the Docker container, the image. So now we actually have information of thing is actually happening. Before, this was just airing out in the other one. But now this is actually, so image pull successful. Took about five minutes to do it. It started up the, it's, it's running Docker run, um, passing in a bunch of uh, variables and stuff like that. Um, the environment variables that we created. It doesn't look like it passed in the, you wouldn't want to show this. First of all, you wouldn't want to show this on stream, but since we're deleting this, it does, this doesn't matter. This didn't actually set the Rails um, environment variable when starting when starting starting the site. This might still work, but it's not optimal because it's not running. It's not running in production mode. It's running in development mode. So let's see if this actually works. So we can actually see everything got pulled down. Everything's good. We can actually see in the dashboard requests or data coming in and coming out of the, of the instance. Oh, and then here is the first issue that we talked about that I talked about in, in the readme is the rails application is not configured to connect to recognize this domain for the Azure, for the Azure application. Uh, this is our URL. It's not configured that, so it's telling you, you need to set this. So let's do that. So let's go into the who, um, if to do a sub. So in the configs right here, um, I'll add in. So actually we can replace this with uh, basic dash learning goose man. So there, so we match it up, we're pushing it into the configs. Let's go ahead and rebuild this and we'll push this. So we're almost there to get this to run. So we have this, let's create a new image so let's rebuild this docker image or docker compose build i got so many gifts with this as i have to do it like i'll figure it out <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna build a new Docker image, and we're gonna upload this to ACR. The cool thing that's gonna happen now is since we uh, configured everything, when we upload this to that, when we when we tag this, so again we have to go through the steps that we went through before. We just um, we created a new a new image right here. Let's uh, tag it. Our tag is not this stream CC Azure. It is a uh, learning goose man. And then we'll just tag it latest. We'll delete the old one. Just to, I just want to do that ahead of time. And then let's push this. So now it's going to push this to, um, our, our container registry. Once this is finished deploying to our container registry, the webhook is gonna fire off that Azure head setup for us and it will tell the app, the web app. I'll tell this web app here, the basic learning web app that, hey, 
you have a new update or there is an update to the registry uh go go fetch it and deploy that new image update so this is tagged on 54 we're at 105 so we should so once this is completed we should hopefully see uh a new a new event firing off very soon i don't think this auto refreshes not to just do it for myself forget if the logs are just sequentially or if i just clear them out I'm sure you have to get talk a bit channel with all, I was all the channels I'm, I'm talking in. It depends, honestly. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they decide um, who gets what, especially if you're if you're. I know it's just purely random if you're just in the chat lurking. Active chat first, yeah. Then lurkers. And then followers, yeah. So I think some followers ended up getting gift subs the other the other night. Cause it was a pretty sleepy, sleepy stream time. That has been completed. Now let's now oh, let's uh, deploy this new image. Go to the Azure extension. Good evening from Ireland. What's up, Full Stack Live? How's it going? Thanks for staying, stopping by on a late evening for you. Isn't it around like midnight ish for you? Oh, it's only 9 p.m.? Nice, okay. I'm about to say, I'm like, isn't it late? Nine p.m. here, but in my jammies? Okay, gotcha. How many times is for um, the United Kingdom, is, the, is it all under one time zone or is it, or is there enough, you know, with that there's multiple time zones? I never really thought of that before. One time zone? Okay. Good to know. Never thought about it. Cause you know, here in America, we have, we have like four different time zones. We got Pacific, Mountain, um, Central, and, and East or time zone on the continental United States. That's a lot of America for you. America's wide, just like its people. <laughs> so there, as opposed to the Republic of Ireland where I live, which is part of the is part is part of the UK. Okay. Yeah, I just say United Kingdom, but yeah, I know the whole circumstances with Ireland. <laughs> it's just so weird because it's like, it's attached. So I, it's like, I don't know. What would be the technical term to say for that region to, to include the Republic of Ireland, but not refer, refer it to as being part of the UK? Mexicans are pretty wide too. Mexicans are thick. Thick. We all got thick booties. The men and the women. <laughs> What'd you call me? I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the uh, container like a like a word a message that the container like I'm waiting for it to deploy the new container. How long does it take for that webhook to fire? Uh, 
I still got my pieces. That's all good. Okay. <laughs> the British Isles. Ah, that's a good way. I'm waiting for this to hopefully push the new registry update. I mean, there's a webhook that's supposed to tell it to do that. Let's see. Let's check the activity log. So you can see me requesting a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of logs. Go to the Azure. Uh, but let's finish writing this up. We're pretty much kind of done for today. Dennis, you got too much stuff in the way. Actually, kind of deploy this. Uh, um, click right, right click on the new image that is under your ACR. That is in your. ACR and select yeah okay well so we can and then deleting everything is as simple as getting rid of the resource group so if I go back to my resource group here like I mentioned before if you put everything under the same resource group, it's really easy to delete everything. So I can just go ahead and delete this resource group and type in the resource group's name. So learning Gooseman, delete. And now everything that we just created is gone. Uh, I forget what the name of this, I forget if it's also called resource groups in AWS. But uh, in Azure, I feel like it's a little bit easier to understand than in uh, AWS. So yeah, so you just can look up your resource group and just select everything and to delete it. So now all the work we just did, all the services we built up and stuff like that, AWS is a pain in the ass. This is why I say like, it's, this is why I like, I've been, this is why I've been enjoying Azure is because I feel like it's a little bit more intuitive. I mean, like the whole resource group thing is a lot easier to understand than on AWS. Maybe AWS is like a little bit more hard mode, like way more configurable, no clue what's behind it. But I was able to just to go in, find this resource group and just click delete. And now it's going through and deleting everything. After a while, this resource group is going to be gone. The application's going to be gone. Done. And we did everything through uh, VS Code to set everything up and deploy it. So I call that a, a really cool um, experience. Really easy.